got a lady coming through, a lady who makes me feel terribly, terribly short of breath. She, she would have suffered either with heart trouble or possibly even have passed with a chest condition. But she's showing me herself a little younger than she went to spirit. She's got lovely thick hair, which I feel in the latter part of her life was much, much thinner. Have you got any contact with her, Stephen? Does, uh, I don't know if this means anything to anybody. I have heard the name of Butler given to me, B-U-T-L-E-R, but I'm not sure yet unless I'm told um, whether this is her or the person we want. I wonder if there's anybody in our audience that either holds the surname of Butler or knows that name well, please. Do we have anybody there? Do we get a voice? Are you Butler? I am, yes. That is your name? Yes. Who is William Butler that's calling in from the other side of life? Someone that was known as Will, William, passed over quite a while back, I've got to say. I don't know if you've heard of that name, have you? William Butler? No, uh, sorry. Don't make it fit, whatever no. you do. Hello, sir, there. Is this making sense to you of a lady that passed in the way I described possible heart condition angina. I feel she went silently, quietly in her sleep after quite a bit of illness and she brings back memories here of the war years and the bombing. I know a man called William Butler. Good. Whose wife passed away with angina. Yes. But I've got to say that that picture doesn't look like The picture doesn't fit with her. That's fine. We Sometimes we work like that. Right. We may have two links here. We might have, yes. We'll do what we can to sort that out. Everything that uh, Stephen has said it rings true, but unfortunately the face doesn't. I see. We cannot place the face. Right. No. As long as the details are right, we may be able to, to piece it together if we can. We're working under very difficult uh, circumstances here. We're trying our best. Can you? Um, Come on, sort yourself out. We'll try and place the face. What we normally do is try to link through and get the name of the communicator, but we can't demand that. But if you take this back, to that connection, you will find, you said, a photograph, Coral, of this lady, and it's something to do with the bombing, so I would like to say to you, the audience, and the television station, to, to follow you back and have a look and see if you can place her. At least try that. I certainly will, yeah. Would you do that? Will do, Thank yeah. you very much Thank indeed. You. Now, Pearl said that the face she has drawn should mean something to somebody in our audience. Is there anybody here who can relate to this picture? Please vote if you think you recognize the face. Well, ten people say they recognize this face, which is odd since you said, Carl, that only one person should relate to it. Perhaps this drawing is not as specific as you think? Well, thank you very much anyway, Carl and Stephen. The claims of spiritualism have been with us for years. In 1917, two young girls in Yorkshire fooled the world with these photos of fairies. One of their main supporters was the great writer Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, who was a fervent spiritualist himself. And here we are by the famous waterfall at the back of the right home in Cottingley, where photograph number one, the most important of all five, was taken by Elsie, of Francis, behind the cutout. I'm taking the place of Francis. Well, you see, it was the waterfall that was the clue to the whole thing that should have tripped everybody off to the secret of the hoax. The waterfall in the original picture is heavily blurred because it took at least a 10-second exposure to make that photograph, while the wings of the fairies are perfectly sharp and clear, and those wings should have been fluttering very rapidly. An obvious clue, but no one spotted it. In later life, Elsie explained how she used these illustrations from a popular children's book. I uh, stretched them out across the gauze, the gauze <laughs> and uh, left a bit of gauze just round the waist and put the wings on, and then we cut them out. So even someone as brilliant as Conan Doyle was taken in by these fake photos of fairies. Another of his supernatural enthusiasms was the work of spiritualists and mediums. In Conan Doyle's day, mediums tended to work in darkened rooms. Nowadays, they often perform in more cheerful surroundings. Currently one of Britain's most successful mediums, please welcome my next guest, Maureen Flynn. Good evening. 
evening, everybody. I hope to be able to make a link with someone here tonight and bring a loved one through from the world of spirit. I have been given the name of Taylor. Now, someone here tonight either is Mr. Taylor or the name of Taylor will have a close connection with you. Uh, my mother's maiden name is Taylor. Because, yeah. you see, I have a gentleman here who links with that name very clearly. And uh, he would have been quite elderly when he passed, and he passed with a heart condition, chest, lungs, heart condition. And he would have linked with your mum, and he came very clearly to bring his love to you. I feel he's your granddad. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. And who's, who's Jimmy? Do you know who Jimmy is? Come, come, picture oh, James. Jimmy. James. I'd love you to find Jimmy, James, because I feel that there's a link in the family there for that name. Hang on a minute. Do you know who Doris is? No, I can't picture that either. <laughs> okay. I know I made a mistake linking this gentleman with Doris, because he doesn't look a bit like a Doris, as I said. But I do know that I'm in the same area here... I have a lady, and I don't know whether I'm saying Doris, Dorothy, or Doreen, but the Dory bit is right. And I know that I'm in this area here. Can someone here take Doris? Can you place the... I want to say Dory, but I know it's one a name Doris, right. right. Doris. And the young man who passed in a some kind of crash, some kind of accident. Does that make sense to you? I mean, we're on a program and everybody wants the truth, so you've got to go a little further. I'm terribly sorry. The name of John I want to give yeah. to. Does John make sense to you? No, but I think you got him crossed with the last caller. It's James or Jimmy? James, Jimmy. Please forgive me. I'll let that... I'll, well, I'll have to let you be the judge of whether that makes sense to you, because obviously when you're trying to put a lot in very quickly, then you do get these sort of things. But he passed very suddenly and very quickly. And it's funny because I could feel something over his face. I could feel something over his face. As if he would have had some kind of... This is most unfortunate you picked me, actually, because I'm a slightly non-believer. Uh, but does it make sense to you? Yeah, it does make sense. That's right. That's fine. Because I just felt... And he reached out his hand. He reached out his hand. Yes, you've got my husband, so... Um, but I'm really the wrong person for this program. Well, I'm terribly sure you should have told your husband that. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> the, the fact of the matter is that obviously through all this, he's been trying to reach you. And just to let you know that he's pleased you're here. But I hope that maybe his link with you will bring you, bring you some joy that he's here with you tonight. And a lot of love. Well, I wanted to look carefully at the connections that you say you made. Let's take a vote. First, how many people in our audience tonight can connect with the name Taylor? About 30%. And now, how many people can relate to the condition of the grandfather? Hmm, about 55%. So to sum up, about a third connect with the name Taylor, and over half connect with the details of the grandfather. Well, that's very interesting. Marine's statement seemed to be more general than each of you thought before we took the vote. Make of that what you will. Let's consider whether you might have forgotten other details which none of you picked up. Do people remember accurately what takes place in a reading? Well, we have with us tonight Mr. Rod Beale. Mr. Beale, you're a satisfied client of Marine's, I understand. Is that correct? Yes. She did a reading for you not too long ago, which I understand you think is, is a very good reading. Yes, she did. A few simple questions, if I may. First of all, how long did the thing last, first of all, the About reading? half an hour. About half an hour. Uh, how many names, pardon me, did she give you during that period of half an hour? Would Probably half a dozen. About half a dozen. Mm -hmm. And did they all hit? Not everyone. Uh, how but, many but did they had a similar hit? sounding, like Doreen, Maureen, that type of thing. Well, uh, you were kind enough to give us a tape recording of that reading done.